Remember in the democratic process, the citizens have to play a very important role because the political power that usher in a particular government office rests in the hands of the citizens. And this is most times done through a periodic process, the regular process known as electioneering process. That is why every government recognizes the impact played by every citizen in a particular state. Because the citizens are very much useful and they contribute towards the governance of a particular institution. That is why when democracy is being defined as government of the people, by the people, and for the people, it actually indicates that the people, the citizens, the electorate, have to play their own role in terms of governance. Because if the citizens did not cast their vote, obviously it will create a situation where there will be so called of government. That is why we have a situation in terms of different forms of problems. But as in the case of democracy, we have a situation where we can divide it into two aspects.
What are the two types of democracy that we have? One is the direct democracy. And the second is the indirect democracy. We take the first type of democracy. This is the type of democracy practiced in ancient Greek city states, where we now call Greek or Antes. This was a situation in which all the citizens in a particular state of community go to their choir as we now Victoria Park and take decisions that affect their lives and affect the lives of other individuals. Whether you are in support of a particular motion or you are in, you, you do not support a particular motion. But then consultation is being done between the leadership and as well the people. Those who are leading and those who are the subject of that particular nation. So on that note, that has been the ancient type of democracy practice in Greek. Again, we have the indirect democracy or we can say representative form of democracy. Now this is a situation in which citizens exercise their franchise, exercise their rights to elected individuals, elected individuals, Who become their voice. As in the case of Sierra Leone, we have the Parliament. The House of Parliament located right here at our east. We have our representatives to the form of MP as member of parliament. Parliament. All of us are going to parliament and we express our views. We initiate laws. So what do we do? We elect, we participate in the democratic process in order for us to elect our representatives, particularly the president, the member of parliament, president, member of parliament, we have a mayor, a mayor, We also have um, a council, etc. All of these individuals are very much important in our community. For our president, he is leading the whole country. And of course, the members of parliament, they deal with the constituency. They also have a mayor who are dealing with city, city or town. And of course, our councillors, they deal with war, etc., etc. So all of these individuals, we play our own part in order for them to 
perform their role. And this is most likely applicable in modern day democracy. So as a matter of fact, we have most of our electioneering process being organized or conducted in the form of representative form of democracy. The reason being is that we have now got large population Large population that cannot count every individual in a park for the national stadium, for instance, in order for us to decide our franchise or to take part in the democratic process. Otherwise, there will be some big promotion of content around the national stadium, where we have a population of 7 million. And uh, in five we have two to three million who are eligible to cast their vote. All of them. The two to three million people cannot, you know, have a seat right there at the national stadium. Because importantly, uh, for democracy to actually exist, we have to accept the concept. For instance, we have countries like Sierra Leone that is practicing democracy. We have Nigeria, we have the United Kingdom of Great Britain, and of course, we have the United States of America that are good examples of democratic states. Now we come and take a good look at conditions necessary for the operation of democracy in the state. We have many conditions that are necessary for the operation of democracy in the state. If these conditions are not necessary, we will have a big question mark in terms of the theory of democracy. Listen to as indicated, we have regular free and fair elections. In the case of Sierra our constitution states or denotes that every President or elected government should rule for a period of five years. To rule for a period of five years. After which, we should go into an election. So, for us to be seen as a country practicing democracy, that principle needs to be followed. And that means we think we are young going through democratic processes. In 2007, for instance, we have an election. In 2012, we also have another election. In 2018, we have an election. And currently, we have the Sierra Leone People's Party. In 2007, between 2007, we have the All People's Congress that won. 2012, we have the All People's Congress that also won. And in 2018, we have the Sierra Leone People's Party, which is the sitting government ruling Sierra Leone at the moment. So we have demonstrated, you know, regular key and fair elections. The next 
that is very much important is the fact that in 2023 the calendar has already been set for us to go into election. The second point is the fact that we should have freedom of expression and a free press. What do we mean by freedom of expression? This is a situation where the voice of speaking and of course the issues of citizens are being discussed openly, freely, without censorship. Reason being is the fact that every citizen must be aware that in voicing out your view, you should not attack, you should not assassinate the character of an individual, you should know where your freedom of expression ends. So some people um, pronounce freedom of expression, but then they tend to attack the personality of other individuals. You can attack issues, but you don't attack, you know, the personality of other people. Likewise, the press. The press should be seen to operate in a free, fair, and transparent manner, meaning there should be no control from the executive, for instance, that would affect the press in its operation, meaning it should be free for political interference. Another very important point is that we should have a legitimate citizen. But we are going to try with this democratic process, we need more educated individuals. Now, in our case, the citizens who are educated will be able to make sound judgment about government and their operation. And that will enable them to decide very well where the manifestos of candidates are being given out. Another very important aspect is independence of the judiciary. The independence of the judiciary um, is telling us that the lawyers, the magistrates, the judges, and of course the chief justice should be independent, should be free from any external control because the judiciary is a separate part of government. The executive, neither department should be fixed to them. They act according to their precedence, according to the constitutional provision in me. Again, we have violent opposition. In a democratic state, we should have an opposition that serves as a watchdog for the activities of a government. When the opposition is acting in that particular capacity to identify issues of concern and focus solutions, we criticize objectively and in focus solutions, then it makes you a vibrant opposition. But then the sitting government should not, you know, um, create problems for the opposition. As we see most often, some um, governments around the world create certain challenges, not listening to the views being held by opposition parties. Again, we have recognition of minority groups. Most often, we accept the view that the majority carries the group. But then, we have minority groups that have the competence, the idea, but lack majority. They are views that help to promote the development of the country should be recognized, should be accepted. Another very important aspect is separation of power, as mentioned. In a democratic state, the parliament should, should act in independently. The judiciary should act independently. There should not be any interference among the three organs of government. Otherwise, there will be fusion of power. Lastly, but not the least, there are rule of law. Every individual is equal before 
the rule of law should have equal treatment in terms of suffering. Whether you are rich or poor, black or white, as a citizen of the state, you should benefit from equal opportunities in terms of the rule of law. Because every idea that will found there, this particular theory indicated that every man is equal before the law. Every man has the same right whether you have a higher position or you are found, found as a middle class or an ordinary citizen. I hope you benefited a lot from this particular um, teaching. And let us also not forget that other countries have their own system that is practiced. Look at Nigeria, they are practicing a federal um, system of democracy. Of course, they have prisons, for instance, this is a practice, their own form of government. And of course, the United States of America again is there in terms of four years. If you have any questions, you can pose your questions. Thank you very much.